Hey there, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. I have a pretty exciting video to go over with you today that has to do with the comparing of three different battery technologies that we offer our customers. Enphase, Canadian Solar EP Cube, and the Franklin Whole Home. Now, traditionally, when I did a battery comparison video, we really just look at the specifications, what are the features and capabilities. But in this video, we're not just gonna look at that, we're actually gonna expand our conversation to model it under the new net billing program for the state of California because basically we need to consider storage with every solar purchase or transaction that way you can get as close to a net zero bill under the new net billing program. Now, I'm gonna actually have real modeling to demonstrate that. Of course, we're still gonna talk about the pros and cons of each of these batteries, but we're really just gonna focus on a couple bullet points. So, with that said, be sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you can stay informed about what's going on in our state of California and with the rest of the world uh, for the renewable energy sector. I know Texas has some big heat waves coming this summer and the utility has already put out notices that, the, that homeowners can expect power outages. So if you're interested in solar or adding storage, you probably want to request your quote, whether you live in our area or not. So that way we can help get you in touch with a certified partner with these manufacturers because we have great relationships with them. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen with you because I've modeled it out in our proposal software, which there's a couple things I wanna talk about in our proposal software. One, our proposal software accounts for degradation, whether it's the solar panel, the inverter technology, or the battery technology. This is really important because a lot of people don't wanna consider storage because they feel they're gonna to have to replace it in 10 years or less. But in reality, most of the products on the market are gonna last more than 10 years, especially the ones that we're offering. Are some of them gonna last longer than others? Yes, absolutely, because they have better cells. And as such, those cells improve the rate of return that you're gonna receive over the full life of the system, which we tend to model around 25 years. So keep that in mind. If you're requesting quotes or have quotes from other companies, ask them if they're modeling in the savings calculations are factoring in degradation of any of the equipment over that lifespan that they're showing you. If someone shows you a savings of $300,000 over 25 years, well, is there degradation being factored into that? I don't think you're gonna see that type of savings under the net billing program. You're gonna have a much more modest savings. It's still a great return on investment and you'll see here real soon. Now, what I've done is I've pretty much, you know, done, we've done enough transactions that we kind of know where our average customer lies. And it's around 8,422 kilowatt hours a year. That equates to around $3,000 in terms of purchasing from the utility company. This is with SoCal Edison. So if you live in San Diego Gas and Electric Territory or Pacific Gas and Electric Territory, you're, this, this cost right here that I'm showing for Edison is actually higher for you. So the savings are actually better in those particular territories. I selected Edison because it's the, the base for us. Every, everything above this, you're gonna have a higher savings. And the best thing you could do if you wanna see what your savings would look like is to request your quote from us. That way we can model this for you in your particular application and so show you a solar system with 100% offset and a storage solution paired with it and how it can save you money in the short term and long term. So with that said, we're pretty much just gonna go with 100%. You don't need to do 120, 130% oversizing uh, like you did under net metering. What you really need to focus on is that battery. You need to at least have 10 kilowatt hours. So in this, we have a six kilowatt solar system using Canadian solar 400 watt modules. Uh, these are a high performance panel. They're all black, 25 year equipment warranty, 25 year performance warranty. This will generate around 9,000 or so kilowatt hours depending on your roof orientation. Could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less, but it'll definitely give you 100% offset. Now, pairing this up with a 10 kilowatt hour battery, this is our minimum that we're gonna be recommending to our customers, so that way you can get the maximum savings and have the lowest entry cost. Now, Enphase being a microinverter and modular design, they have microinverters up on the roof, so you have module level monitoring, and then you have the battery, which also has 
that's also modular. So each end phase battery is three kilowatt hours, 3.3 kilowatt hours, and they also have microinverters built into them. That ends up affecting the power output. So when you have three IQ3 batteries together, you have an IQ10, that 10 kilowatt hours of storage only gives you 3.8 kilowatts of power. During normal grid usage, not a big deal. But if you have a power outage, this isn't a lot. So you're not going to be starting an air conditioner. You, you might be able to do a microwave because the surge is 5.7 kilowatts. So you should be safe there. But anything greater than that, I would say anything over 20 amps, is probably going to be a struggle for the end phase solution in a backup scenario. Normal grid scenario, not a big deal. The EP Cube uses a hybrid inverter, so this is a DC coupled solution. So you do sacrifice module level monitoring just if you didn't opt for that. You could pay a little bit more and upgrade the optimizers, but you don't need to. You could just do the rapid shutdown devices and you'll have string level monitoring, so it's not, not that critical. The EP Cube also is a modular design, so their entry system is a 9.9 .9 kilowatt hour battery, and it's actually three 3.3 kilowatt hour batteries. So this solution is really compact, and like I said, it being a hybrid inverter, that's controlling the solar and the batteries, which in turn gives you more backup capabilities. So you actually have 7.6 kilowatts of backup, and you can have this inverter surge to 22 kilovolt amps. So that's a really large surge, and you could actually start an air conditioner with that during a power outage. So you can have a small battery storage, good inverter capacity, capable of some really unique features that you don't necessarily get with like Enphase, for example. Now Franklin is similar to Enphase in some regards, except for the fact that it doesn't have a modular battery. So it's a single battery like a Tesla Powerwall with the inverter built in. It only comes in one size. 13.6 kilowatt hours, you get five kilowatts of power output, you have 10 kilowatts of surge, not too shabby. This is an AC coupled battery, so there's no DC coupling for DC to DC charging like the Canadian Solar EP Cube. But, you know, you can pair this with any solar system you want. You can use end phase microinverters like we're modeling here, or you could use a string inverter that doesn't have module level monitoring. What we're seeing is this is a very popular choice that other installers are doing for their customers is pairing the Franklin whole home with the Enphase microinverters. So we've tried to create a level playing field here. So these are all entry storage solutions and solar systems to give this particular model or customer a zero bill or as close to um, that. You could probably expect to pay around $30 a month in this scenario. Now what you can see in terms of the purchase price is the EP Cube definitely comes out ahead. This is before the tax credit, before the state rebate, you're just under $33,000. So that's really good. That gives us a return on investment of 7.83 years. Now, I'm gonna look at our proposal software, which I've prepared already for us, because this information needs to equate with degradation over 25 years. That's the big issue that so many people have is with storage is they're like, oh, the battery's gonna fail in 10 years. No, the battery's not gonna need to be replaced in 25 years, depending on the product you get. Yes, are there some products that will need to be replaced in less than 15 years, around, 10, around that 10 year mark? Yeah, and that's gonna affect your return on investment. So you need to focus on batteries that have a high quality and low degradation rate. And you need to make sure you're asking those solar companies that are giving you quotes if their proposal software factors in degradation. Ours does. So let's take a look at this. Now I have the Enphase system up first. We know it's a 10 kilowatt hour storage, $34,000, you know, just under 35. And you can see right down here on the net financial impact, over 25 years, you can expect to save $41,000. This is after the net, you know, your tax credit savings and your any state rebates that you're able to claim. So if we look at the detailed financials, you're around 11.2% rate of return. This is still really good. If you look up what a 401k's average rate of return is or a Roth IRA or just a general fund like a CD or something, this is significantly higher. So this is still a really good investment to make in your home because the cost of energy continues to rise. Now in our modeling, we're only increasing the cost of energy 4% year over year. It's a very modest increase. Now, if we compare this to the EP Cube, this is where things are gonna, are gonna change real drastically because of the degradation. Look at that estimated net savings. We went up to $60,000. The rate of return is 
you know, not much faster. It's seven years, 10 months, so I shaved off um, a month there, you know, with that $2,000 difference. But if we compare this to the Franklin, because the Franklin, yes, it has more storage, but is that battery better? It's not. It's a little bit better than Enphase, so you are seeing a little bit better return on investment. Uh, in terms of savings over 25 years, you're at 46,000, but your payback period's further. You know, you're, you're six months longer, five months longer, being over eight years now for your return on investment. The Franklin having more storage is helpful in getting you a larger savings over that time. So if you look at that detailed financial year around 11%, EP cube over 13%, really, really valuable. This is an entry system. Now under net billing, we wanna have more storage. So I've modeled the same situation, but with 20 kilowatt hours. So end phase, that tends to be our, our go-to for most of our customers is either 10 kilowatt hours or 20 kilowatt hours. I don't have a lot of situations where customers need more than 20 kilowatt hours. We've been doing batteries for over five years with our solar. We've been in the industry for 15, and I can honestly say there is not a lot of reasons to have more than 20 kilowatt hours of storage. I definitely have seen homes with, you know, on, on YouTube where people are talking about they got 18 Tesla Powerwalls. I don't know why the hell you need that unless you just didn't bring in the utility grid. So if you're leaving off grid, sure, you need more than 20 kilowatt hours. But if you're connected to the utility grid, you don't really need more. And it plays into your return on investment, you know, as well. So the EP cube scales up being a modular design. You can go up to 20 kilowatt hours. Uh, the battery capacities ends up being at 19.98. So it's pretty much 20 kilowatt hours. It's right in line with Enphase. Franklin, again, being a, it's, it only comes in one size. It's not modular. Uh, you, you jump up to 27 kilowatt hours. You do get more power output. You're at 20 kilowatts. The surge is now more in line with the EP cube, but at the end of the day, 20 kilowatt hours is really where you're gonna to wanna to be. And as you can see, do you wanna spend an extra $10,000 for seven kilowatt hours more of storage? That seems like a lot of extra money for something that you're gonna, that, that's affecting your return on investment. As you can see, you're now 11 years out for this. Whereas with the EP cube, you're under nine years. You're still under nine years, you're eight and a half years. End phase, you're a little bit longer. You're over nine years, like nine years, one month, and you'll see that here in the model. And end phase, what are you paying? What are you getting out of that extra five thousand dollars? You're getting module level monitoring. Is that worth it? It, it? Depending on your roof orientation, it may not be. Most modules today have bypass diodes, so optimizers and microinverters aren't always necessary with the advancement in the technology that's integrated into solar panels today. They have this type of technology built into them. So if a section of that panel gets shaded, it used to be that it affect the entire array. That's not the case anymore with a string inverter or, be and that's really because of the technology in the solar panels. So you don't necessarily need module level monitoring, but if you want it, you're gonna pay a little bit more for that. Now, let's look at that with end phase. If we jump over to 20 kilowatt hours, look at that, nine years, one month, uh, 10 years. So your rate of return got a little bit of a, a hit. Your estimated savings jumped up to $50,000. Why did it do that? Because you have more storage to degrade. So over 25 years, you still have more storage capacity to work with. But if we compare that to EP Cube, which has a really robust battery, they have a really high-end battery, eight years, seven months for your payback period, almost $80,000 over 25 years. That is a lot of money. If you're someone that's gonna be retiring in the next 10 years or 15 years or even 20 years, and you're living in your house that's your forever home, and this is your, your end-all be-all, you might wanna consider a solution like this. You really should because $80,000 isn't chump change, especially as the cost of energy continues to rise. Now, if we compare this to the, the Franklin, which has the biggest storage capacity out of the two, $70,000. So it's, it's marginally close to the EP cube, and it's able to do that because you have so much storage. So even though it can be a little bit lower, uh, a little bit lower quality battery, so since you have more storage, it ends up balancing itself out um, in, in terms. But your payback period is over 11 years. That's way longer than in phase, way longer than the EP cube. So it's a balance between these three uh, products and, and whatever you try and do moving forward. 
I think a hybrid solution is definitely the way to go under the new net billing solar program in the state of California. The EP Cube is a very versatile product, as you can see, and it gives you the most savings. We've definitely done some other videos on the EP Cube, so if you want to learn more, check those out. But it, it's definitely proving to me to be a pretty big player moving forward. And that's why I wanted to put this video out there. So that way we're not just comparing a battery to battery so much as comparing it in terms of the savings you're going to see over 25 years under the net billing program for the state of California. But if you're in a different state and net metering still in effect, you know, you have more options. You could go with a more cost effective approach with a, that has a premium technology built in, already built into it and you're, you're going to have an even greater savings uh, than what I'm showing in this video. So, well, that's it uh, that I wanted to go over. If you uh, are interested in going solar, whether it's with Enphase, EPCube, or Franklin, or you, you want a quote for all three for your particular application, then visit us online to, use, uh, to request your hassle-free quote. We really do make the process of going solar easy and affordable, and we're doing our best to give our customers with a broad range of solutions so we can you know, literally show you all three of these in your particular situation. And um, be sure to subscribe to the channel. You know, we have some more content coming out that I think is going to be pretty valuable and you're not going to want to miss. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.